Anyone who thinks hot rod SUVs are just big-engined and aggressively styled versions of their civilian counterparts should have a chat with the folks at SRT. They strive to make complete packages. Case in point, while developing the Dodge Durango SRT, engineers ran the SUV around Virginia International Raceway, yup, the same one we visit annually, with and without an intake in the lower left corner of the front fascia. The difference was 1.2 seconds per lap in hot conditions, so the production model has the intake. Having an intake position close to the ground on an SUV removes some utility from the equation. We're fine with that, and we're guessing most people interested in this truck would be, too, this vehicle isn't likely to tackle the Rubicon Trail. With the low intake, hoarding streams or washed out roads is out of the question. And the SRT's Pirelli P0 run flat summer tires, a $595 option, prefer pavement. We love the idea of an SUV that can accelerate to 60 miles per hour in 4.7 seconds and snap off 104 mile per hour quarter mile passes in 13.3 seconds. Those are performance abilities we can and use regularly, while rock crawling is an automotive aptitude we employ far less frequently. Quickly. Now. Dodge would love it if we took their word for it that the Durango SRT had turned out an HRA certified the lapse time of 12.9 seconds instead of testing the car ourselves. As with the Challenger SRT Demon, we don't doubt Dodge's performance claims. We're sure the Durango SRT made a 12.9 second pass while the NHRA was watching, it's just that the grid launch surface of a drag strip probably fully accounts for the 0.4 second difference from our testing, which is conducted without that benefit. Transforming a regular Durango RT into an SRT involves swapping out the 5.7 liter V8 and replacing it with the gloriously throaty 6.4 liter Hemi that SRT uses in other products, then modifying the suspension with stiffer springs, 3% stiffer in front, 16% in back, an 18% stiffer rear anti-roll bar, and adaptive Bilstein shock absorbers. The wide mouth grille, dual exhaust outlets, and hood with obligatory scoop and heat shedding, rear-facing nostrils complete the exterior lock. The price premium to step up from a 360 horsepower RT to a 475 horsepower SRT is $16,700, which may seem like a lot but, at $64,090 to start, the Durango SRT is a whole lot of car. The six-passenger interior, sorry families of seven, no middle benches offered, comes with standard leather and micro suede upholstery and high bolstered seats for the front row. Our test car also came with the $1,500 SRT interior appearance package, which nets carbon fiber trim, some painted accents, a micro suede headliner, and, for the first time in any Durango, a stitched dashboard cover. The dash isn't genuine leather, but it does a passable impression. Retained is the Durango's excellent third row. Not only is it fairly easy to get into, it has sufficient room for adults. Had we not climbed back there, we probably wouldn't have noticed how the bezel around the 8.4-inch Uconnect screen and back controls doesn't line up with the center console. Now we see that offset, which is related to the design, not fit and finish, every time we drive a Durango. Multiple personalities, no disorder. This SRT variant gets 8 driving modes, including sport, track, snow, tow, valet, and eco. You also can let the car interpret your inputs while in auto or mix your own recipe of transmission, stability control, all-wheel drive, suspension, and steering preferences in the custom mode. Even in the softest setting, the ride is appropriately tough. Some credit for the ride quality goes to the 119.8-inch wheelbase, which is 5.0 inches longer than that of the Jeep Grand Cherokee with which the Durango shares a platform. Suspension damping is ratcheted up to a firm but tolerable level in sport. In track mode, the all-wheel drive system directs as much as 70% of available toward to the rear axle, but the ride is so coarse it could polish stones. Tow mode splits the torque evenly and turns on the active noise cancellation. 
This system, like a giant set of headphones for your cabin, otherwise is active only when cylinder deactivation also is turned on. The idea is that the higher demands of towing are generally louder, and the passive noise amplifier that is the 48 cubic foot cargo hold behind the second row, 17 cubes with all seats up, can produce some taxing tones. Even so, the grumbles of the 6.4-liter Hemi running on four cylinders still are pretty obvious. Our car didn't have the $995 towing package. It enables an 8,700 pound tow rating, which bests the Chevrolet Tahoe's by 100 pounds to lead the class of large three-row SUVs. A spare tire comes with the towing pack, too. More than a big motor. The SRT 0.87 gram skid pad figure isn't bad, but it isn't fully representative of this SUV's handling prowess. For starters, turn-in is crisp, precise, and altogether very untruck like The steering also communicates budding understeer with clarity. It's fast and stable at speed, and the anti-roll bar, stiffer than the one in the RT, does a commendable job of keeping the SRT on an even keel. For 295-45ZR20 Pirelli tires and Brembo brake hardware, six-piston calipers on 15.0-inch diameter rotors in front with four-piston calipers clamping down on 13.8 inches of iron in the rear, hull the Dodge down from 70 miles per hour in 167 feet, one foot longer than needed by the Mercedes AMG GLS 63 and one foot shorter than the last Grand Cherokee SRT we tested. The infotainment screen can present an array of information that Dodge calls performance pages. Select from a handful of gauges and display them either in an analog format or as a scrolling ribbon, like an EKG machine. We're not sure why one would want a real-time readout of the exact amount of horsepower being used, but this is a family hauler and those pages may keep folks entertained on long drives. Also managed via the infotainment screen is the launch control system. Choose your launch RPM anywhere from 1500 to 3500 revolutions per minute. Push the launch control button, hold the brake with your left foot, floor the gas, let go of the brake, and 470 pounds to foot and 475 horsepower are unleashed. It is that simple. The demon engineers, who created a convoluted launch sequence, could learn something from the Durango SRT's launch simplicity. While it's entertaining for the passengers to feel and hear the V8 Prime itself using launch control, we found that a hearty break to work launch got the Durango off the line slightly better. A third row, and it tows. Two? Dodge may have found a winning combination here. Many SUV buyers are looking for three-row seating, and there is a smaller subset that wants a vehicle with the machismo of a muscle car. Until now, the only other three-row, high-performance option was the $126,000 Mercedes-AMG GLS 63. BMW's X5M, while quicker and grippier than the Dodge, doesn't offer the optional third row that's available in the regular X5. It's the same situation with the Range Rover Sport SVR, if you get the hot engine, you can't have the third row, which is tiny, anyway. Properly equipped, the Durango SRT's tow rating is greater than those of even the large body on frame SUVs from General Motors. At $71,270 as tested, the Dodge's price undercuts any SUV that even approaches the same level of performance. So, whatever off-road utility is lost, there's no penalty in useful everyday attributes. This Durango SRT may have been bred on a racetrack, but it deserves to live in a lot of garages.